ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय Prayer to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Please be merciful to me, because who is more, who can be more merciful than you within this whole world? You have descended into this world because you are the purifier of the fallen. You descended into this world to purify the fallen. You won't find anyone more fallen than me. Then, ha ha, problem. Alas, Lord Nityananda, you're always blissful in the bliss of Krishna Prem. So please give me the. Please give me the glance of your mercy because I am very unhappy. Well, I'm just going to move up and down. That's what I've been doing for millions of lifetimes, going up and coming down in the material world. I don't know what sound men think, but it seems to me to make more sense to not have this right in front of the face. So, ha ha, so then uh, calling out to Sarup Damoda, Sanatan Goswami, Rupa Goswami, Raghuna, Das Goswami, Raghuna, Bhatta Goswami, Gopal Bhatta Goswami. And Sri Jiva Goswami and Lokanath Goswami, all the great devotees, followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Then to, uh, praying for the mercy of Srinivas Acharya, Vayakara Sri Acharya, and Ramachandra, Ramachandra Kaviraj. Nirotam Das prays for their association of all these devotees. And Srila Prabhupada summarizes this by saying the sum and substance of this song is that we should always call out to the Lord and His devotees for their mercy, which is the subject I'm going to speak on today and in the upcoming days. Uh, taking this verse from Bhagavad Gita, which we'll chant now. And the theme is Hope for the Hopeless. Daivi Hyesha Gunamai Mama Maya Duratyaya Mameva Ye Prapadyante Maya Me Tang Tarantite this divine energy of mind, consisting of the three modes of material nature, is difficult to overcome. But those who have surrendered unto me can easily cross beyond it. Veda Sahya. No, he asked about recently. He's working on it. All right. He recently, uh, there was some internet broadcast and he asked a question from Croatia to wherever it was, I can't remember, maybe it was Lithuania or Russia or somewhere. And I said, I'll answer the question in Croatia. The answer to his question is, what Krishna says here, this divine energy of mind consisting of the three modes of material nature is difficult to overcome but those who have surrendered unto me can easily cross beyond it. 
purport by His Divine Grace, Srila Prabhupada. Now, it's okay when I sit like this, but while I'm reading... Oh, you want to get the wasp out? Okay. It's a Kali Yuga wasp. It's going for the microphone instead of the flowers. <laughs> it's just must be... Uh, must have got so it must be a mentally retarded wasp. <laughs> it's eating too much uh, chemicals. The Supreme Personality of Godhead has innumerable energies and all these energies are divine. Although the living entities are part of his energies and are therefore divine, due to contact with material energy their original superior power is covered. Being thus covered by material energy, one cannot possibly overcome its influence. As previously stated, both the material and spiritual natures being emanations from the Supreme Personality of Godhead are eternal. The living entities belong to the eternal, superior nature of the Lord, but due to contamination by the inferior nature, matter, their illusion is also eternal. The conditioned soul is therefore called Nitya Badha, or eternally conditioned. No one can trace out the history of his becoming conditioned at a certain date in material history. Consequently, his release from the clutches of material nature is very difficult, even though that material nature is an inferior energy. Because material energy is ultimately conducted by the supreme will, which the living entity cannot overcome. Inferior material nature is defined herein as divine nature due to its divine connection and movement by the divine will. Being conducted by divine will, material nature, although inferior, acts so wonderfully in the construction and destruction of the cosmic manifestation, the Vedas confirm this as follows mayang tu prakriting vidyan mayinang tu maheshwaram although maya illusion is false or temporary the background of maya is the supreme magician the personality of godhead who is maheshwara the supreme controller svetashvatara upanishad 410 donkey no mule upanishad svetashvatara means a mule, cross between a donkey and a horse. Another meaning of guna is rope. It is to be understood that the conditioned soul is tightly tied by the ropes of illusion. A man bound by the hands and feet cannot free himself. He must be helped by a person who is unbound. Because the bound cannot help the bound, the rescuer must be liberated. Therefore only Lord Krishna or his bona fide representative, the spiritual master, can release the conditioned soul. <coughs> Without such superior help, one cannot be freed from the bondage of material nature. Devotional service or Krishna consciousness can help one gain release, such release. Krishna being the lord of illusory energy can order this insurmountable energy to release the conditioned soul. He orders this release out of his causeless mercy on the surrendered soul and out of his paternal affection for the living entity who is originally a beloved son of the Lord. Therefore, surrender unto the lotus feet of the Lord is the only means to get free from the clutches of the stringent material nature. The words Mam Eva are also significant. Maam means unto Krishna, Vishnu only, and not Brahma or Shiva. Although Brahma and Shiva are greatly elevated and are almost on the level of Vishnu, it is not possible for such incarnations of Rajoguna, passion, and Tamoguna, ignorance, to release the conditioned soul from the clutches of Maya. In other words, both Brahma and Shiva are also under the influence of Maya. Only Vishnu is the master of Maya, therefore he alone can give release to the conditioned souls. The Vedas, again, Svetashvatara Upanishad, white mule Upanishad, confirm this in the phrase, Tameva Viditva, or freedom is possible only by understanding Krishna. Even Lord Shiva affirms that liberation can be achieved only by the mercy of Vishnu. Lord Shiva says, 
Mukti Pradata Sarve Shang Vishnu Eva Nasang Shayaha. There is no doubt that Vishnu is the deliverer of liberation for everyone. <clears throat> Lord Krishna herein gives the understanding that Maya is something to be overcome and that can be done by surrendering to Krishna. What is the nature of Maya? Various philosophers will give various understandings very simply we can give the definitive understanding that Maya means to forget Krishna or it can even mean to remember Krishna but not in the right way some people who remember Krishna very intensely do so in an unfavorable way such as Kangsa so we should always think of Krishna Manmana is Srila Prabhupada translated always think of me once Srila Prabhupada began a lecture on this verse Manmana Bhava Madhbhakto I believe it was the ninth it comes twice in a slightly different form in the Bhagavad Gita in the ninth chapter Srila Prabhupada began a lecture on this verse with one of Srila Prabhupada's common sayings what is the difficulty what is the difficulty to think of Krishna and if we think about it it should not be very difficult to think of Krishna Prabhupada went on to explain you have to think of something mind is always active Nahi kaschet kshanamapi jatu tishchatya karma krit. Even for a moment we cannot s- cease to do something. And we're always thinking of something. So, what is the difficulty? We have to think of something. So, what is the difficulty to think of Krishna? And if you think about it, it should be very easy to think of Krishna. Especially if we consider that thinking of Krishna is very nice because Krishna is very nice. The Krishna consciousness is very sweet. It's very noble. It's very attractive. Krishna is very Krishna means attractive. And Krishna consciousness is so much better than anything and everything that Maya has to offer. And Maya has many, many, many things to offer. Hoya Maya Das Kori Nana Abhilash. When we become the servant of Maya, we have many desires. Maya has an emporium. An emporium means a shop with lots of things. All kinds of things. You can get anything you want. That's the Maya thinking you can get everything you want. She offers everything. You can get everything you want. Maya is offering. But not Krishna. So, uh, Maya has many things to offer. But they're all miserable. They're all whatever Maya has to offer is all miserable and useless and various there are many adjectives which can be used to describe Maya none of them are very good only one good one comes here Daivi Maya is ultimately divine being an energy of Krishna but from this side of the Viraja river Maya doesn't look very nice. Well, that's the problem. Maya does look very nice. (laughs) 
So what is the difficulty to think of Krishna? We have to think of something. Why not think of Krishna? Krishna consciousness is so much better than anything the material world has got to offer. If we consider the nature of people in Maya, sometimes we laugh, sometimes we feel astonished. How can they be so stupid? But then we find we ourselves are in the same position. We're not thinking of Krishna. Maya means not to think of Krishna. And we are practicing sadhana to remember Krishna. Right? Isn't that the idea? We get up in the morning, chant Hare Krishna, put our hands in our bead bag, sing, dance. It's all sadhana. We're not doing it out of... Uh, well, some of us may be, but mostly we're on the, on the stage of sadhana. Where are we? Sadhana means we're attempting to attain something. It's a, a practice with a particular aim in mind. So the sadhya or the aim in the goal of sadhana is Krishna Prem. In Krishna Prem is characterized by always thinking of Krishna. What is the difficulty to think of Krishna? And from Srila Prabhupada's perspective, it's, well, there is no difficulty. It was, it's just the most normal, natural thing. Just as we don't think of breathing. So the pure devotees, they it's just automatic for them to remember Krishna. But for us, conditioned souls, we're suffering from this example is often given, Prabhupada often gave this example, spiritual amnesia. So, a person suffering from amnesia usually comes after a, some shock or accident. And they just completely forget who they are, who their, even their closest relatives are, where they live, what, what, they forget everything about their previous existence. So the method to uh, revive the memory of an amnesiacal patient is to uh, bring them in contact with things which they remember very well and then I guess they must be able to speak. They don't learn how to speak. Is it? You know that. They, learn how, they know how to speak. That faculty remains. And then say, well, remember, uh, I'm your wife, and uh, like that. And they gradually, by bringing them in contact with the things which they have a relationship with, then uh, gradually everything is revived. Their thoughts are revived. So Krishna conscious, the process of sadhana, is for bringing us into contact with Krishna by chanting His holy names, by seeing His deity form, by serving His deity form, and performing the sadhana of always, or as, as much as possible, 24 hours a day is best, being in contact with Krishna. And the idea is that Sometimes, and we hear again and again, your relationship is with Krishna, just like the amnesiacal patient. Your, your, you have a relationship with your wife and your children, and then at some point they click, oh, okay, right, got it, okay. So at some point in time, it's supposed to, uh, to click, and, and maybe theoretically that we say, yeah, yeah, okay, I'm a servant, yeah, I'm a servant of Krishna. If we serve Maya, you get slapped. So, if I serve Krishna, it's very nice. So, theoretically at least, some understand. Please remind me, Vaibha Prabhu, at the end, in case I forget. So, all right, and then, but at some point, it's supposed to, you know, realization is supposed to be that. Oh, I'm a, okay, got it, all right. I'm a servant of Krishna. I'm not supposed to do anything. 
It, it's, it stops being theoretical. And we actually become absorbed in Krishna. Um, if we consider it, it may seem very strange how we don't think of Krishna. That what is the difficulty, Prabhupada would say. And if we think about it, there's no there's no good reason not to think of Krishna, not to be Krishna conscious. If we under, understand this philosophy, maybe we may go out and explain it to others, that there is a supreme controller, that supreme controller, his name is Krishna, he's the most attractive, he's the most beautiful, he's the most powerful, we have an eternal relationship with Krishna, when we think of Krishna always when we surrender to Krishna by the process of bhakti yoga we become completely happy all our miseries go away dukh and dure galo all my miseries go away when we surrender to Krishna so it's the only sensible thing that anyone who's sane which is uh, uncommon in the material world but we are by taking to Krishna consciousness, coming to the path of sanity. So we should always think of Krishna. Why not? Why don't we think of Krishna? How could we be attracted to anything after hearing about the glories of Krishna, after participating in Krishna consciousness and at, even at our neophyte level, the experience of Krishna consciousness, even at our neophyte level, far surpasses anything that we've experienced in this lifetime of attempts to enjoy material enjoyment. And we can understand by hearing from Bhagavad Gita, hearing from devotees, that the attempt to enjoy this material world is, it's not just in this lifetime, but in many times, many lifetimes have been going on and it's never been successful and never will be successful. So having understood all this, at least theoretically, but not just theoretically, because we, there must be some realization to take to the process of Krishna consciousness and stick to it at least for some years. So, but at least theoretically we've understood that there's nothing but Krishna consciousness worth living for. At least, we, I hope we've understood that. At least, theoretically. If one is to be initiated, one should at least theoretically accept this. The, the essence of initiation is not how many rounds, regulated principles. You can be a pure devotee and under rare circumstances, the, the principles can be broken. You may not even chant 16 rounds, or any rounds. I don't know about the gopis, they didn't chant any rounds, did they? When they came again in Chaitanya Leela, they did, but otherwise they didn't chant. Vangsi Das Babaji Maharaj, he didn't chant any rounds. Didn't have a bead bag. Didn't, do, didn't follow any of the processes of sadhana. So, of course he's not to be imitated. You can also imitate not, pass, not eating and not passing stool, so... If you want to imitate Bhangshi Das Babaji, then do that first, and then then we'll talk about it. Anyway, the essence of initiation is not the rules. Don't take that out of context. Rules are very important. But the essence is surrender to Krishna. That is the essence. That now my life is meant for surrender to Krishna according to the system given by the Acharyas. That's why we take initiation. Otherwise, if you say, well, I just surrendered to Krishna, what do you need a guru for? What do you need initiation for? We have to do it through the system given by the Acharyas who tell us, do this, don't do that. But the essence is the spirit of surrender. And not just the spirit, that spirit is practically manifested in activities in Krishna consciousness. So the essence is uh, <clears throat> surrender to Krishna 
And if we surrender to Krishna, then our life completely changes. That if we actual surrender means in the fully blossomed state, then we're fully Krishna conscious. Dikka kale bhakta kare ata shamarpan. Diksha means to surrender our life to Krishna. And the result of doing so is that we become fully Krishna conscious. We have no, that means we're no longer surrendered to Maya. We have no longer contact with Maya. So surrender takes us beyond Maya, as Krishna mentions here. So uh, we should be Krishna conscious. We should surrender to Krishna. We should go beyond Maya. I trust we all agree with this. We are here at this camp for the purpose of being Krishna conscious, which means to cultivate always remembering Krishna. So then the question comes, the often asked question, which Veda Saprabhu asked me and many people ask me, and I'm also asking the same question, that as we are supposed to always think of Krishna and the process of Krishna consciousness is supposed to make us Krishna conscious, then why aren't we Krishna conscious? What's wrong with us? We're all damn fools. That's the answer. <laughs> we're chanting every day, Hare Krishna, and we're not thinking of Krishna. Why don't we think of Krishna? What is the difficulty? Well, the difficulty is we're all damn fools. But we are a little bit intelligent because we've taken up the process of Krishna consciousness. There's some intelligence is there. So at least we're intelligent enough to understand that I'm a fool and I need to be purified. But then we take the purification process and we, we take to it and we... Don't take to it at the same time. <laughs> so, here we are, chanting Hare Krishna so many years and still attracted to all the worst thing that Maya has to offer. Still not thinking of Krishna. What is the solution? What shall we do? How can we get free from this ridiculous position of being in contact with the, the highest truth, the most glorious person, the, the, act, the, the nectar for which we are always anxious, we're, we're there practically. I mean, once once you take to Krishna, you're practically there. You're chanting. You're, pure devotees, what do they do? They chant Hare Krishna. And what are we doing? Chanting Hare Krishna. Pure devotees, what do they do? They worship Krishna. We're worshiping Krishna. We're practically there. At least theoretically. Uh, that's the problem. <laughs> that is the problem. So this seminar is called Hope for the hopeless. I mean, how hopeless can you be is after, after millions of lifetimes of wandering in the material world, you finally get the thing which you're hankering for and you get it and then you look at it and you say, Okay. Not very enthusiastic. I mean, who is... The, who is the most foolish person? <coughs> Maybe the devotee who... Well, Prabhupada said this, uh, that uh, those who take to Krishna consciousness are fortunate, those who don't take to Krishna consciousness are unfortunate, but those who take to Krishna consciousness and then again give it up, they're the most unfortunate. It's like you get, you get the jewel and then you don't take it seriously. <coughs> so, what to do? Well, I'll tell you the answer 
and then we'll go back over the, the details. The answer is <laughs> in the song that we just sung. You just keep us keep faith, keep your hand in your bead bag. That's what I was saying the other day, right? That's what's the qualification to sit up on this. Not a very elaborate seat, but it's above all of you. What's the qualification of myself, Smita Krishna Maharaj, Manida Prabhu, Punachandra Maharaj, and maybe you in future? You may also get a big seat. What is the qualification to do so? Keep your hand in your bead bag. <laughs> That's it. And and the song we are singing, keep on praying for the mercy of Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu, Nityananda Prabhu, Advaita, Gadadha, Srivas and all the devotees. So that's that's the essence. There's the answer. So now we can all go to sleep, no need of any more seminar. But we're supposed to think of Krishna, so let's talk some more about this subject. Well, actually, it's not going to sleep. If you're calling for the mercy, you have to remain awake to do so. Sleeping is a death-like condition. Utishta, Jagrata, Prapya, Verande, Bodhata. Get up, wake up, is the Upanishads. Uh, become aware of the boon which is possible in human life. So we have to be awake. So, uh, it seems very difficult, doesn't it? What is the difficulty? But to us it seems very difficult. Us, whoever wants can be included in this us. I don't know who that us is, but whoever wants can join with me in saying... Well, it seems difficult. Prabhupada would say, what is the difficulty? But it seems very difficult. I've been chanting Hare Krishna for three years, 13 years, 30 years, more, and still, I didn't seem to have got very far. It's like a, like a mouse on a treadmill. You know what that means? Nowadays, humans, it's very common also. Humans on a, that exercise machine, you run and you don't go anywhere because it's coming, it's coming the other way. The track is coming, the electric, electrified track. So people do that for exercise. So we're on a treadmill. We're running, 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 but not getting anywhere. So it seems very difficult to get anywhere. But, hope for the hopeless. There is hope. It is possible. Krishna says here that although it is very difficult to overcome maya, but many people have done previously, vita raga bhaya krodha manmaya mamupashitaha bahavo bahavo many Bhavo jnana tapasa putamad bhavamagataha. Lord Krishna says that being free from material attachment, fear, and anger, vita ragabaya krodha, manma, becoming absorbed in me, taking shelter of me. Many persons, many persons in the past, by knowledge, and austerity became purified and came to me. So it is possible. It is possible. So you may say, well, all right, becoming free from attachment, fear, and then becoming purified by knowledge and austerity sounds very difficult. <laughs> but this, Lord Krishna says, Putamad bhavam agataha. No. Bhavo jnana tapas. What do I say? Second line. Vita ragabaya krodha. Manmaya mamu pashrita. Taking shelter in me. This is the point that Krishna 
stresses when we may be thinking it's very difficult to be a devotee of Krishna, but uh, Krishna uses this word, ashrit, sheltered, those who are in shelter. This He uses this, this is uh, an this is bhakti, an essential component of bhakti, taking shelter. So Lord Krishna also says, Mang hi partha via pashritya. Mang hi partha via pashritya. Ye pi siu pape yoneha. Striyo vaishyas tata shudras te pi yanti parangatim. Lord Krishna also says that. Those who take shelter in me, they may not be from a very pure background. He specifically says, they are from a very uh, sinful background. Uh, born in sin. And Lord Krishna gives the example of uh, vices. That's considered sinful. We heard this morning the cheating propensity. Of course, Nanda, Nanda Maharaj also a Vaishya. They don't all have to be cheating. But it's considered a low birth. And what to speak of Shudras, women, Dvijabandhu, they're also classified as high-born but low uh, mentality. So anyone, even of such a low-born position, Born, it means born with uh, low propensities. They can come to me, Lord Krishna says. And elsewhere we find there are many assur- similar assurances. Kirata, Hunandra, Pulinda, Pulkasha. What's the name? Kirata, Hunandra, Pulinda, Pulkasha. What's the next line? Abhira, Shumbha, Yavana, Kasadaya. Ye ne cha pa pa, same word pa. Ye ne ye chena pa pa. Yadu pa shrayasra, those who take shelter. Shudhyanti tasmai prabhavishnave namaha. Upa shraya, here's another uh, prefix is added to the word ashray. Those who take shelter. Indirectly, those who go through the devotees of Krishna to take shelter. Even if they're kirat, means jungly type people, hun means the Germans. Most people like that one in Europe. Andhra. Often we ask, I just came across something that Andhra means a mixed caste. Kirata Hunandra Pulinda, what's that? Greeks, is it? Greek, Greeks, Turks, uh, Croatians, uh, Irish, British, Swedes, they come under the Hun, Huns, is it? Probably. Another kind of Hun, anyway. We're all, we're all a pretty uh, sinful lot. Chinese, Kasa. So if they take shelter, this verse is spoken by Sugadev Goswami to demonstrate the power of Lord Vishnu. He's so powerful that he creates, maintains and destroys millions of universes. That's not very much. But to deliver such people who are so fallen, not even directly but through his devotees, that means that's really powerful. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is cons- he is the best of all avatars the essence of all avatars avatar sa chaitanya avatar so what did he do i mean he didn't expand himself like vamana dev and he didn't kill demons like most of the avatars and he didn't write any books what did he do he delivered the most fallen. And that also mostly through, well, by himself personally and by sending his followers Nityananda to Bengal. And himself he went to South India and Varanasi. 
he sent Rupa and Sanatana to the western side and like this sent Prabhupada all over the world so that's uh, that's more of an achievement than you know lifting up the earth which has fallen down well, God of course he does that you know? otherwise that's what God does right you know and otherwise what's the meaning of being God if he just you know if he can if he can just uh, win the weightlifting medal that's not God's the most powerful so what does that mean he can lift up more weights he lift up, lifts up the earth and creates a few hey, even Vishwamitra created an imitation universe so creating a universe <laughs> Become a big enough yogi, you can do that also. So, saving the fallen, that is the, through his devotees. So anyway, the point is that there is hope. Even if we are very, very fallen, which is normal in Kali Yuga, everyone in the material world is fallen, and in Kali Yuga, we're all very fallen. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is very merciful. And therefore, he comes to this world and what is that? Uh, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Jive Doya Kore Saparshad Avatari I can't remember Bhakta Rishane Swadhyadham Then uh, Shikai Shara, this is the point. Shikai Shara Nagati Bhakate Pran. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is very merciful to the jivas. He comes personally with his followers. Shapashada Shia Dhamma Shaha Avatari. He comes with his followers, with his own Dham, Navadip Dham. He descends to this world and he teaches the process of Sharanagati, he teaches us how to surrender. We have to surrender to Krishna. Getting out of Maya means Ma meva ye prapadyante Maya me tantarantite. Getting free from Maya means we, we have to surrender to Krishna. We cannot be in Maya and be in Krishna consciousness. It's not possible. So the process of Krishna consciousness means to surrender to Krishna. These are all things that we've all heard before, I hope. I, and we should all hear it again and again because we're all very expert at not surrendering to Krishna. Even we may think that we're surrendering to Krishna, but we have very expertly taken shelter of Maya and we're very expert at again we if the shoe fits wear it I'm not blaming you <laughs> but if you find that this description fits you then you may I'm not supposed to I'm supposed to see you all as pure devotees right but anyway that's why I'm saying we me and and whoever else might fit the description we're all very expert at pretending to be Krishna conscious. Which is good in one way, because if we did act according to what was actually in our mind, then it would be a disaster. I could speak from personal experience. <laughs> there wouldn't be any Krishna consciousness movement. We'd all be somewhere else not here at this camp so uh, we have to surrender and it is possible to surrender Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, gave us hope we shouldn't become hopeless we, sometimes we say to us I'm so fallen it's just hopeless that is an, another kind of rascaldom if we become too hopeless that's another kind of rascaldom because that's it's indirectly saying that, well, I'm so fallen, even God can't help me. 
God wants me to go to hell. That's rascal them. He doesn't want us. To, he wants to deliver us. Or sometimes we hear devotees say, "Well, you know, I, 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 I smoke a few cigarettes now and then, but you know what? I'm, I'm very fallen." You see, they, 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 they a devotee should say, "I'm very fallen in humility," uh, as along with his endeavor to come up from the fallen condition. But if you say very fallen, and you think, well, you know, we should be honest, right? We, sh- we shouldn't make a show. So I don't want to make a show of being Christian. I'm just starting smoking some cigarettes. See, I'm, I'm fallen. I'm not just, you see, you're saying you're fallen, but you don't believe it, but I'm proving it. <laughs> see, I'm, I'm just being honest, you see. We should, we should be in touch with our inner baby. So I, f- I have this feeling that I should smoke cigarettes. So that is rascaldom. And that is uh, confirmed rascaldom. It's, that's such a person who uses Krishna consciousness to justify his rascaldom or to, to put a, a pseudo-philosophical twist on it. There's no hope for such a person. So a lot of the arguments we have within our movement, they're, they're actually useless. If someone's arguing for, for a position which is actually not Krishna conscious and using supposedly Krishna conscious arguments, quoting Prabhupada, quoting Shastra, what can you do if, if people want to say that? That... Uh, want to describe a situation which is not Krishna conscious as being Krishna conscious, then what can you do? As Prabhupada said, you can't wake up a person who is pretending to be asleep. But there is hope. And in our fallen condition, we should maintain hope. Because if we give up hope, then... There's nothing left. There's hope that we can become Krishna conscious. Many in the past have become Krishna conscious. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to deliver the fallen. So if at all you ever feel like this, that it's, I'm chanting Hare Krishna, but I'm not thinking of Krishna. I'm praying 16 rounds. Dear Lord Krishna, please engage me in your service but I don't really have any taste for chanting or for service. I'm just doing it still after so many years. I'm doing it because I have to follow the rules. What should I do? Stop following the rules and just be more natural. Be careful of being natural. As long as we are in material nature, then being natural means going away from Krishna. We should be natural. We should all be sahadya. You can quote me on that, but you should quote what I'm going to say now also. Sahaj means easy or natural. So in pure Krishna consciousness is the natural state of loving Krishna. So pure, all pure devotees are sahajyas. They're all naturally full of love for Krishna. They naturally love Krishna. But we should not be prakrita sahajya. Prakrita means in material nature. Not th- they take Krishna consciousness very easily and very cheaply. They say, let us be natural. God has given us this body. He has given us certain desires. It would be wrong not to indulge in them. So we should indulge in them. The rules, they are... Rules are tools which can be given up. They're not necessary. You just have to love Krishna. So as I'm not following any rules, I also love Krishna. This is rascaldom. This is not actual love of Krishna. The beginning, love, prem, that is very close to us. We're all naturally full of love for Krishna. But at the same time, we are separated from it by a raging river of material desires. Many, many desires and a very fast-flowing river full of many 
dangerous sharks and animals. So how to cross that river? Or well, that river, that's, uh, it's a very big river. It's like an ocean, huge ocean of material desires. So Krishna consciousness is our nature. That is our nature. But we are separated. We're not separated from Krishna. It, it's an illusion. But we are separated by the material desires that seem very difficult to cross. But Krishna says, those who have surrendered to me can cross beyond it. We can cross. There is a means to do so. And the means is to surrender. Now, wait a minute. Where do we start here? Those who surrender to Krishna can easily cross beyond maya. And how do you surrender to Krishna? How do you cross beyond Maya? By surrendering to Krishna. And if you surrender to Krishna, you easily cross beyond Maya. And all we have to do is surrender to Krishna. But where where do we start? What do we do? Well, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to teach the process of Sharanagati. Uh, there is a process which is given by the devotees of Chaitanya Mahabharu. Chaitanya Mahabharu taught Rupa Goswami Prabhupada, taught Sanatana Goswami, told them to write books in which the process of bhakti is described, all stages of bhakti, Sambandha, Abhidheya and Prayoja. All these topics are covered in the books of the Goswamis of Vrindavan, First, we have to understand what is our relationship with Krishna. We have to understand we have no intrinsic relationship with this material world whatsoever. Our only relationship with Krishna is with Krishna. We have to act in that relationship and by doing so, we redevelop our natural love for Krishna. So, uh, surrender. What does surrender to Krishna mean? It's not a vague term. Nothing in Krishna consciousness is vague. Everything is clear. Uh, surrender means anukul yasya sankalpa pratikul yasya varjanam rakshishyatiti vishvaso goptritve varanantata Atma Nikshepa Karapanye Sharavidha Sharanagati. This is a description of Sharanagati, the, the process of surrender to Krishna. It is a process of surrender to Krishna. It is not as the uh, one, or, or one of the Mayavadis who Srila Prabhupada would regularly berate Dr. Radha Krishna. His Prabhupada is well known for berating Dr. Radha Krishna's misinterpretation of the Manmana verse in the ninth chapter of Bhagavad Gita. But he also took up issue with Dr. Radha Krishna, who was the first president of independent India. Interesting. They made a, he was a philosopher, he wasn't a politician but they made him the president. Interesting. Yeah. Huh? They, they made a philosopher. The first, even though his philosophy is bogus, but they, they had the idea to make a philosopher as the president. Just like recently they made this Abdul Kalam the president. He's not a politician of any kind, but he's a scientist. So, a worldwide known. So Radha Krishna was known in philosophy. He was, they made it anyway. His philosophy was all wrong. So anyway, he would quote this verse. Uh, he quote Anukul Yasya Sankalpa. He quoted this as uh, I can't remember exactly, but it's uh, goodwill to all beings. So Prabhupada quoted this. This is nonsense. This, this is this Anukul Yasya Sankalpa, or making a vow or a, 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 a determination to act favorably. This verse comes in a Vaishnav Tantra. 
Vaishnav Shastra. So it is in relation to Vishnu. One should perform activities which are conducive to always thinking of Krishna and always serving Krishna. It's not just a vague, be nice to everyone. Be nice to everyone and don't be nasty to anyone. That's the kind of thing that, you know, you get that from uh, that, uh, who's that guy in Pune? Not the one who came on later, Osho, this, uh, ba, ba, ba. I can't remember. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I met him on the train once. He's, well, kind of be nice. He's be nice, be good. Saiba, they all say that. Be good, be nice. But specifically in relation to Krishna. We should perform activities which are favorable for cultivate or to Krishna. The activities which are pleasing to Krishna. This is the general principle. And avoiding all those things which are not pleasing to Krishna or which are which will impede our uh, surrender to Krishna or thinking of Krishna. So these this is the principle, the first two principles of Sharanagati, and those principles are expanded in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, the do's and do nots. Vidhi Nishade, do and do not. What should we do? The things that we should do. We should uh, the first thing is that we should ashraya again the word comes take shelter anupashraya take shelter through the devotees ado gurvashraya we should first of all take shelter and then krishna dikshanu shikshanam we should take initiation and instruction from a guru vishram bhena Guru Seva. We should, with affection, serve the Guru. So these are the, then the do's. We should chant the holy names of Krishna. We should worship the deity of Krishna. We should circumambulate the temple. So there are the do's and the do nots. We should not blaspheme devotees. We should not associate with non devotees. So these are the more detail is given what we should do and what we should not do and then how to apply that in our lives that we require guidance and we have to cultivate a sense of Krishna consciousness too because we may say we are guided by Guru but it's not that the Guru is going to be holding our hand like a baby all our life the mother holds the baby's hand and controls the baby in the beginning but after some time the baby has to grow up and based on what the mother and all other gurus, the first guru is the mother, what the what instruction they've got, he has to learn how to behave. So it's not that your guru is going to be with you at every moment and tell you do this, do that. But what you've learned, you have to apply that in life. So, Anukulyasya Sankalpa, Pratikulyasya Bhajana, Rakshishatiti Vishvaso, to have faith that Krishna will protect me. Tata, Krishna will maintain me. These two are intimately related as are performing activities favorable and rejecting those unfavorable. These, so the first two and the second two, they have an inner link between them. Uh, then, Atmanik uh, Shepa, which literally means to throw ourselves at Krishna. We have to go to Krishna. It's not the. It's not just following rules, but we should be very eagerly cultivating, running to Krishna. And karpanya. Yeah, we do. That means uh, just that we have the word kripa mercy or kripa. Well, that's different root. No, it's different root. Uh, Kripan means very miserable, miserable person, miser. So uh, a feeling of myself being very useless and fallen, humility. Then one can pray like this, that uh, 
Mo sama potita prabhu na paibaya. You won't find anyone more fallen than me. So these are all elements of surrender. We have to uh, surrender to Krishna. Which means we have to be serious. Ma meva ye prampantite. Ma meva ye prampantite. We have to surrender to Krishna. Anyway, we have to surrender. If we don't surrender to Krishna, we surrender to Maya. We are controlled. If we, we if freedom is an illusion, we think we are free. We are controlled. But if we ex- accept to surrender to Krishna, then we become free from Maya. But that means a very serious decision to do so. There's no 50% surrender. What to speak of 10% surrender? Not even 99%. Surrender means complete surrender. Recognizing our position as completely dependent on the Transcendental autocrat, Krishna. Autocrat means he can do whatever he likes with us. No more desire, no more personal desires. Ah, that's the meaning of surrender. It means one has to have great faith in Krishna to do that. Because if we think that Krishna may mistreat me, then we won't surrender. A, a, a little puppy dog that will try to take shelter of some child, young boy. And then when the, then the boy looks after then that little puppy dog has faith in the in the young boy that he will his full faith. The boy can pick him up by his neck, the puppy dog. And the puppy dog will just l- hang limp. Because he knows this this boy is looking after me. He's not going to harm me. And actually the the boy could strangle him or throw him down but the dog is fully relaxed the dog can be the, the master can harm him but he, he knows that he won't harm me I'm fully safe so that kind of faith is required to surrender therefore we hear again and again to develop our faith that we we should surrender we, we, we are safe to surrender here we're in a good posi- we're in a good position to surrender this is what I should do I will Everything, all I have so many desires, but my real self interest will be served by surrendering to Krishna. That faith. And practically, when we hear Srila Prabhupada's lectures and the way he spoke and, and all his books, practically, it's most of it is just leading to this point that we are meant for surrender to Krishna and if we do so our real self-interest will be served and doing anything else is just completely madness we should surrender to Krishna so practically I mean there are descriptions of the of Krishna's Leela and there are many descriptions in the Acharya's books but Prabhupada's writings they're, they're mostly this theme is there again and again it's mostly on Sambandha Abhideya and then Prayojan that will come but just understand this point Jeev Krishna Das Evishvas just have just understand this have faith in this I am a servant of Krishna therefore we should serve Krishna we, have, we should have faith in this do it seriously and everything will develop from that but still the question remains. I've been doing it for so many years. Been going through all the formulae for so many years. And still, I'm in Maya. What's wrong? Well, let's talk about that tomorrow. If we're all here tomorrow. Krishna willing, we'll continue this tomorrow and I'll finish the seminar there with a couple of announcements one is that uh, unobtrusively 
No, that word means quietly, you can say. Let's use a simple word. Uh, within our midst has arrived a uh, another disciple of Srila Prabhupada. I think he's coming here for the first time to this Liga camp. Vaibhav Prabhu from Italy, who's sitting here, as I say, unobtrusively. Well, here, please come. So, you can also take the dice as a another one who kept his hand in his bead bag. Um, he wrote to me some time ago saying that he has some land, 10 hectares of land in central Italy. He's from Italy. And he'd like to invite devotees to come and visit him and see and maybe with an aim to settle there. So maybe I'd like to speak a little about that. I'm just going to make another announcement. It's boring to most of you, but there might be some of you for whom it's not boring. But anyway, I should announce it. I also have some books here for sale, which I've written. And if you want, you can buy them. Please buy them. <laughs> 